Hello everyone, welcome to Simba Meta Plays. A Journey Trilogy episode 94. We're pinning this crime on Dahlia Hawthorne right now. And dude, this lady is just wants to kill so many people for some reason. Like, wow, she's just got a long history of murder. Absolutely insane. But like, she, how does she get out of this then? Because obviously she does. Preposterous to even suggest that the witness put the body in there. If that were true, then how do you explain the photo that she took? The corpse could only have been put in the trunk when the incident occurred, and we already know that at the time she was taking photographs. Uh, because the camera has a timer. Now's your chance, Mia. Finish this thing. On the contrary, I'm not so certain about that anymore, Mr. Edgeworth. Huh. <sighs> There's no need to think too deeply about it. What I'm saying is the shutter for this may not have been pushed by Miss Foster herself. Let's take another look at this camera and see what features it has, shall we? It has a timer built into it, even a mini tripod. Hmm. Why, it's almost as if she had brought this camera just to take this picture. What are you trying to say then, Miss Fay? That when the crime occurred, Miss Foster wasn't in the field as she claimed? Well, if she really did use the camera's auto timer, then the answer is yes, she was somewhere else. Exactly, she was not in the field. Hmm, would the defense please explain further? Listen, this is a crucial point. Where was Miss Foster when the incident occurred? In answering that question, we'll also make clear Miss Foster's true identity. Well then, please answer this question. Where was Melissa Foster when the incident on the bridge occurred? Um, I forgot to save. I mean, she must have been... Did we just say she was here? Like, where the killer is? Naturally, the witness was standing right here. Hmm. Well, what do you think, Mr. Edgeworth? Yeah, I don't like the way this is going. Huh. <sighs> Before pointing out where the witness was standing, Miss Faye should do something herself. She should figure out where she stands if you catch my drift. Oh, don't worry. The drift was certainly caught. That was a terrible one. Sorry, Edgeworth. Yes, failure is an excellent opportunity for growth. Now try better next time. Uh, yes, thank you. Where was Melissa Foster? She was... I mean, she saw the car, so she must have been, like, in the car? Or around here? Naturally, the witness was right here, I think. Hmm, in the spot where the defendant's car was. Yes, she had to put the body in the trunk before the defendant returned. You don't mind if I ask one teeny weeny question, do you, Miss Fay? Uh-oh, he's got that condescending tone in his voice. If she put the body in the trunk at that time, as you suggest, that must mean that Valerie Hawthorne was already dead at that point, correct? Hmm, indeed. Please take a look at the top of Dusky Bridge. It certainly looks to me like the victim is still alive. Am I mistaken? Uh... If Valerie Hawthorne was already dead, then who is this? The mountain is famous for spirits, so maybe you think it was the ghost of the victim? Well, it could have been a spirit, right? Miss Faye, don't waste the court's time with this kind of foolishness. A anyway, I still mean to... Oh, wow. They went through, like, a whole line of questioning there, then. To say that that was incorrect. Damn. Where was the witness? Around where the defendant's car was. I don't understand. I 
I mean, she had to set up the camera here, at least. Melissa Foster when the incident on the bridge occurred. Why, she was on this cliff. No, nope, okay then. Okay then. I mean, they were just trying to say that, like, the bridge can't be proven that it was already collapsed at the time, so. Um, she was in the river. <laughs> I thought they might have, like, some special dialogue for that. Sometimes they do it, you know? Melissa Foster... I don't understand why she w how she was not in this general area. Oh my god. She was with the victim. Okay. Naturally, the witness was right here. But that's, that's where the victim, Miss Hawthorne, was standing. Order, order, order! Miss Fay, what on earth? Your Honor, if I may. After parting with the victim on the bridge, the defendant fled by car. But this would mean that there was no time to put the victim in the trunk. In other words, if someone put the body in the trunk, it could only have been before the defendant met the victim. How asinine! Of course Mr. Falls met with the victim. The only person with the opportunity to have put the victim in the trunk is the same man that killed her, Terry Falls. You still don't understand, do you, Mr. Edgeworth? By the time the witness's photo was taken, the victim was already dead. The person in the photo was not Valerie Hawthorne. What? I've never heard anything more ridiculous in my entire life. Then who exactly is the victim in this photo? It's obvious, isn't it? It's your own witness. What? It's the only possible explanation. The woman that Mr. Falls met on the bridge that day was not Valerie Hawthorne. It was you, Melissa Foster. Me? Let's remember that it was raining and foggy on the mountain that day. Mr. Falls himself believed that the woman in front of him was Valerie Hawthorne. But the defendant knew Valerie Hawthorne very well. After all, she was the woman whose testimony helped get him convicted. But since then, my client has spent five hard years in a federal penitentiary. He couldn't remember exactly what she looked like anymore. You are just making this up as you go along. Where's your proof? I've got it all right here. This piece of evidence will blow this case wide open. At the time of the incident, Mr. Falls had forgotten what Valerie Hawthorne looked like. Mr. Falls had forgotten the victim's face. That's why he needed some piece of identification, namely this muddy scarf. Uh. It was Mr. Falls who requested that she wear this scarf to identify herself. That's already been proven by the note the victim left. In other words, as long as you were wearing a scarf like he asked, anyone could have pretended to be Valerie Hawthorne. Well, what do you have to say to that, Melissa Foster? Uh, 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 no! Did she just die? <laughs> 
uh, uh, where's Miss Foster? She's collecting herself in the lobby. Hmm. It's obvious that Melissa Foster did it. She hid the body in the trunk and disguised herself as the victim. She set up the camera to snap a fake photo of them together. The only question is, why did she do it? Well, isn't that obvious? She's the real culprit. Ha! Well, we'll have to wait for Miss Foster to compose herself before we start again. Until then, this court is in recess. The defense and the prosecution are both to wait in their respective lobbies. Yes, Your Honor. Understood. Very well. This court is in recess. Ooh, but why did she want to kill her sister? I mean, wouldn't e we wouldn't e even know that... They, maybe they should have just done these cases in a different order, because, like, this would be a lot more uh, suspense-worthy if we didn't know who Dahlia Hawthorne was. Mr. Falls, I... Ugh! He, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I want to say thanks. You're real good. You really hooked me up. Thanks. We're almost there. Once I prove that she committed the crime... Yeah, but there's one more big obstacle we've got to get past. Uh, obstacle? Yeah, motive. Why would Melissa Foster kill that policewoman anyway? Motive, huh? Anyway, we're still badly in need of information. Information, right. What we need the most is info about this Melissa Foster herself. All we know is that she's a student studying literature. And one more thing. What is it? Well... The incident that happened five years ago, of course. The kidnapping... The kidnapping murder case that Zebra Boy is on death row for. I didn't do nothing! I didn't kill nobody! I never lie! Mr. Falls, in that case, tell us more about it. About what happened five years ago. Okay, I trust you. That day, five years ago, I dream of it every day. This picture, it reminds me everything. Bridge looks same, just like then, five years ago. Like it could fall apart, fall apart any minute. So it's been broken like that for at least five years. Ha! Sorry, buddy, but you sound like the one that could fall apart at any minute. It true, I did. I did kidnap her. Uh, five years ago, I kidnapped my girlfriend, Dahlia Hawthorne. Your girlfriend? Huh? Hey, hold on there. Did you say Hawthorne? The victim's last name. Dahlia Hawthorne. Valerie's little sister. What? Are you serious? The girl. Let her go. Shut up! C come closer, and I kill her! Um, so five years ago he was 20 and she was 15? Sorry, but you're not going to get the chance. The detective back then was Valerie Hawthorne. At first I thought shooting someone for a kidnapping was crossing the line, but... He was 20. He was 20, she was 14. Damn, son! Maybe you belong on death row after all. If it was to protect her little sister, I can understand why she did it. Wrong! No protect sister! Valerie, betray me! Betray us! What do you mean she betrayed you? Everything. All lies. All make-believe. Kidnapping, too. But you just said you did it. A make-believe kidnapping? Dahlia, my girlfriend, my love, my teen angel. Ugh, did he actually say my teen angel? He's seen one too many soap operas. I'd do anything she says. Anything Dahlia says. Anything Dahlia says? Hold on a minute. What you're saying is that the kidnapping five years ago was planned by... Yeah, me and Dahlia. 
And Valerie, too. Valerie was in on it? Dahlia's family rich. Jewelry business. We get one jewel. That's what we thought. Me and Dahlia wrote kidnap note. We sent to her dad. Ask for two million dollar diamond. Tell him make exchange on Dusky Bridge. We tell him Valerie make transfer, cause she knew detective. Having a police detective in your pocket is a useful thing, all right. In the end, you were planning on splitting the two million three ways, huh? Yeah, but that woman! That woman, Valerie, she do it for real. She shoot at me for real, me and Dahlia. I was shot in arm. Dahlia, she jump in river. Jump? You don't mean she jumped on purpose, do you? I couldn't do it. I could never push her. Anyway, I blacked out. Wake up with police all over. And that's when they decided to give you the death sentence. I couldn't believe it. That woman, she betrayed me. Okay, but like, you're still a 20-year-old dating like a 14-year-old, so, you know. There's a little bit of... Illegality in there. Criminality. And what, the police detective sister is like, No, that's cool, yeah, totally. No, this guy? Yeah, this guy for my 14-year-old? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. He's a stand-up guy. Dude, this whole case is nuts. That man, Terry Falls, he killed her, he threw her off the bridge. Okay, so why is Terry Falls not identifying Melissa Foster as Dahlia Hawthorne right now? I mean, she can't look that different. It's only been five years. Same reason he doesn't recognize the police detective either? Dude, this dude's memory is like... garbage. Whatever the opposite of an elephant is. These five years, all I wonder is why? 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 Why did she lie? That's all I want to know! So that's why you called her. You wanted to hear the truth from Valerie herself. Yes. But I forget what she looked like, so I tell her to wear a scarf. I don't want to hurt her. I just ask why. Why? Why did you lie? Why did you betray me? I just want to hear answer come from her mouth. That's all. So that's why. That's why you made a crazy escape like that. Just one thing, Zebra Boy. My senses are tingling all over. Tell me, Mr. Falls, where is it? Huh? Where's what? Come on now, kitten. The ransom. The two million dollar diamond. Remember that now? Did you give it back to Pops? Did the police take it? I dunno. Huh? You don't know? No, really. I dunno. It's gone. With Dahlia. With Dahlia? That day on the bridge. Dahlia put it in backpack. Now gone, with Dahlia. Gone forever, into Eagle River. It disappeared with Dahlia, huh? Wait a minute. You can come back in now! We're about ready to go! Mr. Falls, just one more question. When you said with Dahlia, do you mean the diamond is still missing? Along with the body of Dahlia Hawthorne? Never found her, my sweet Dahlia. They never found her. Swallowed by river, gone. Dahlia, my teen angel. I mean, you guys can date now. Your teen angel? How old was she anyway? Just 14. F 14? I guess you were robbing cradles before diamonds. She plans a fake kidnapping and disappears into the river with a rock worth two mil. Man, oh man, angels these days. Falls takes the fall and gets a one-way ticket to death row. Is Dahlia Hawthorne an angel or is she really a... Okay, well he doesn't deserve death row at least. It's time, kitten. 
It looks like we have a few more aces up our sleeve now. You bet. Diamond added to the court record. The training wheels come off now, Mia. You've got to strike while the iron is hot. That's one of my rules. Remember it. Now then, let's continue with the trial of Mr. Terry Falls. Witness, are you feeling better? Yes, Your Honor. I'll try my best. Hmm. You're a brave young lady. Not this again. I can understand a defense lawyer wanting to get her client off the hook. However, to try to pin the crime on an innocent student is... What are you talking about? My witness is not the person on trial here. She's an innocent bystander who witnessed a violent crime. That's all. What possible reason would a girl like this have for murdering a policewoman? Hmm, it's certainly hard to imagine this woman as a murderer. Her motive, huh? I figured that's what I had to establish next. Well, Miss Faye, do you have any evidence of a motive? Uh, yes, of course. I think. Ha! You're still acting as tame as a kitten, kitten. Mr. Armando, listen. A lawyer is someone who smiles no matter how bad it gets. Smiling on the outside while your guts are twisted in knots is the mark of a pro. Maybe so, but I wish you would quit grinning at me like that. Um, excuse me. May I speak, Mr. Judge? Of course. Mr. Judge is ready any time you like. I'd like... I'd like to say something. Some people here are suspicious of me, right? That's why... I... I at least wanted you, Mr. Judge, to know that it's not true. Hmm, I see. You're such an honest and upstanding young lady. It looks like this witness is a real professional. What do you mean? Look at that 100-watt smile. Just when things are darkest for her, click, she lights right up. Very well, then. Let's hear what the witness has to say. I... I was out of the country until the year before last. Until I entered college, I had never even been to Eagle Mountain before. And I certainly don't have any reason for wanting to hurt a police officer. Holding a grudge and killing the officer who testified against you five years ago, or kidnapping a poor girl, I just think the defendant is a terrible, horrible monster. Hmm, out of the country, eh? Precisely. Furthermore, she has no possible motive for committing murder. Hmm, indeed. You're up to bat, kitten. Sharpen those claws and put on your best smile. You bet. Somehow I have to tire to this case. Alright, well that would be... This. Her wanting to hurt a police officer. Oh, we're not doing this yet? <sighs> no? Maybe we have to press some stuff first. Perhaps, but your behavior that day was very suspicious. Not only have you contradicted yourself here in court, but you know things you shouldn't. For example, the scratches on the trunk of the car. Well, that's... Unfortunately, Miss Fay, your last statement proves nothing. Oh, really? And why is that? The witness came to the police station once to identify the suspect. It's entirely possible that at that time an officer showed her this photo. Hmm, that seems like a rather serious mistake. Ha! That's the oldest trick in the prosecutor's book. That's not fair! That wicked inmate. I'll never be able to forget that horrible day. A grudge? Well, the policewoman's testimony was crucial, wasn't it? Crucial in getting the defendant sentenced to death. 
Yes, and that's precisely why he harbored such deep anger against her. So much anger that he forgot his own guilt. My client has always maintained that he's innocent of those charges. He seems rather forgetful. Your client, I mean. Not only did he forget about what he did, but he forgot the poor policewoman as well. What do you mean by that? Your client? He forgot what the detective looked like, right? It's too bad for her that he didn't forget about her testimony as well. Well, she's right about that. Mr. Falls is kind of forgetful. You said he forgot what the detective looked like. What did you mean by that? Well, he couldn't tell who she was without some kind of identification, right? Quite right. That's why the victim was wearing a scarf as identification. Why, if I had been wearing a white scarf that day, then he probably would have tried to kill me. Hmm, that's true. He's clearly a bitter man. This is bad. Mr. Fall's reputation just keeps getting worse and worse. Sometimes it's best not to poke too deep. What should I do with that last statement? Your Honor, what the witness said just now was tremendously important. I'd like it added to the official testimony. The prosecution has no objection. After all, the defendant is a killer and a mentally unbalanced one at that. That testimony only helps to further prove that point. Hmm. No, that's not why I... Enough. Witness, if you would. My pleasure, Mr. Judge. Hmm. Wasn't wearing a white scarf. But the scarf wasn't even white. Witness, I want you to look at this photo you took. It's hard to see in the photo, but look at the scarf the victim wore as identification. Ah, you were talking about this scarf right here, eh? Yes, that's it. The scarf the policewoman was wearing. I've got her now, just don't mess up. But that's strange. In your testimony, you stated the following. I guess I'm lucky I wasn't wearing a white scarf. White. This is the scarf you identified as belonging to the victim. But it certainly doesn't look white to me. Oh. Well, it was foggy that day, and it was raining as well. It's not surprising that she mistook it for white. Sorry, but not this time. The witness just confirmed that this was the victim's scarf. Yes, but what's the significance? It's true that the scarf doesn't look white, but... There's only one explanation for this mix-up. The reason why the witness thought the scarf was white is because she has seen the victim's note! Witness, have you ever seen this note? N note? I, uh, no, never. It's top secret evidence. There's no reason that you would have. Hmm, I wonder about that. W what do you mean? This note shows Mr. Falls' instructions to the victim regarding their meeting. It says, wear white scarf for identification. White scarf? Ah! Witness, you knew what this note said. And it's because you knew that you slipped up and mistakenly said white scarf. Uh, 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 uh. Well, Miss Foster? No! Order, order, order! Mr. Edgeworth, I'm waiting for an explanation. I'm quite sure this note wasn't leaked to the public. And yet, this witness knew exactly what the note said. At the time of the murder, the number of people that knew were quite limited. Terry Falls is one. The person who wrote the note, Valerie Hawthorne, is another. And finally, one more person. Did you say one more person? That's right, a person that no one would have suspected. Have you figured it out, kitten? Yep. The third person that knew the contents of the note was... Dahlia Hawthorne. And that person is... Dahlia Hawthorne. Dahlia Hawthorne? I've never heard that name before. Look at the victim's note. 
This is what it says. Talk to Dahlia. Tell her this time. There is her name right there. What's this? So who is this person? This Dahlia Hawthorne. Talk to Dahlia. Okay, so then Valerie knew that Dahlia was still alive then. Huh. Miss Faye must be desperate if she's trying to bring the dead back to life. The dead? Dahlia Hawthorne was the victim's deceased younger sister. She was killed in a crime five years ago. Killed in a crime? You don't mean... Yes, she was kidnapped and killed by Terry Falls. You said she was killed, but was she really? What are you implying? Of course, people thought she had died five years ago, when she fell off of Dusky Bridge and was lost in the Eagle River. However, her corpse was never found. She was declared legally dead five years ago. As far as the law is concerned, Dahlia Hawthorne is officially dead. But the fact remains that her body was never recovered. Dahlia Hawthorne was 14 years old five years ago. If she were still alive, she would be 19 now. Melissa Foster, I believe that's the same age you are. Uh, even you couldn't. Miss Faye, you're not saying... But I am. That's precisely what I'm saying. This witness before us is the girl that was kidnapped and killed five years ago. This girl is in fact Miss Dahlia Hawthorne. Wha- What? Ha, nice work. That was like tossing a grenade into a three-alarm fire. But unless you can tie all the loose ends together, you're nothing but a hit-and-run arsonist. I- I understand. If I can expose her true nature, I can turn this whole case on its head. Now is my chance to make Mr. Edgeworth squirm. Mmm, 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 mmm. Witness, just who are you anyway? I, I, I'm... I didn't think it had come to this. That's enough. You don't have to say any more, Witness. Yes, I understand. What? Mr. Edgeworth, explain yourself. Your Honor, I have an admission to make. I honestly never thought the defense would pursue the matter this far. You don't... you don't mean... Yes, the prosecutor's office isn't filled with fools, you know. Naturally, we conduct full background checks on all of our witnesses. What did he say? Ha! It looks like the kid knew. He knew her true identity from the get-go. No way, but then why... If you hadn't revealed her secret, he wasn't going to say anything about it. All he wanted was her testimony, so he made a little trade. Let me introduce you to... The victim's younger sister, Miss Dahlia Hawthorne. But, but, I thought she died five years ago. We thought so as well. But, well, as you can see... Why? Why did she hide her identity for five years? That has nothing to do with the current case. She was merely an accidental witness to a crime. Accidental? I don't believe that for a minute. For the last five years, she's been playing the role of victim. And now we find her acting suspiciously at the scene of another murder. Really, Miss Faye, I must say your strategy here is painfully obvious. You're trying to pin your client's crime on an innocent witness in order to win. At any cost. How dare you? Please, let us take a moment to think. Five years ago, this girl was kidnapped and nearly killed. Hmm. But even worse than that, five years later, Dahlia Hawthorne lost something much more precious. Her big sister. Miss Faye must be insane to even suggest that she murdered her. What? I'm inclined to agree with the prosecutor's logic. Miss Faye, do you have any evidence to back up your assertion? What possible reason would this witness have for killing her beloved sister? Well, you see, I thought I was winning, but somehow he's turned it around on me. Ha! I think you need a little push in the right direction, kitten. The defense is prepared to present evidence supporting our claim. Uh... 
Ah, uh, that wasn't me. It was this guy. This crazy coffee addict. I think we've heard enough empty threats from you, old man. Ha! What makes you think they're empty, boy? Because your protege looks like she's sweating bullets. Ah, I am sweating bullets. You think you're in a tough spot, huh? Of course, aren't I? No. You've just arrived at the moment of truth, that's all. Whether you win or lose, that's up to you. Up to me? Ha, ah, the rashness of youth. How charming. This coming from someone younger than me. Now then, let's not waste any more time, Miss Faye. What motive would this witness have for murdering her own sister, Valerie Hawthorne? Do we say the diamond... We probably say the diamond. What is this? Is this the defense's idea of a joke? If so, I certainly don't get the punchline. Well, Miss Faye? Oh, that was... The rashness of youth. The rashness of youth? And what is your point in furthering such a stereotype? That witness stayed hidden for five years, kitten. There must be a good reason for that. How is it not the diamond? And somehow it must involve Valerie Hawthorne. Oh my god. Her own sister, Valerie Hawthorne. Well, she was the key witness in the case against Farrells five years ago, but also she trying to, like, do some stuff, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Huh. This time, the whole truth must come out. Oh, cause she about to be outed, sir. The story starts after Terry Falls escaped. He called Valerie and told her he wanted to meet. This is the note she left. It says, talk to Dahlia. Tell her this time the whole truth must come out. Valerie Hawthorne gave Dahlia a warning. She told her she was going to reveal to the world the whole truth. The whole truth? There was a dangerously important secret between Valerie and Dahlia. That's the reason Dahlia felt she had to kill Valerie. To keep her mouth shut permanently. A terrific story, Miss Fay. If you like fiction, that is. Enlighten the court, Miss Fay. What was this secret that was so important? Where's your evidence? Okay, now we'll do the diamond. Dahlia and Valerie Hawthorne and Terry Falls. There's only one important secret that connects them all. Oh yes, I know this secret. Your Honor, the defense would like to request further testimony. What testimony? Regarding the kidnapping five years ago, we believe it will explain a lot of things, such as the nature of the important secret between the Hawthorne sisters. Ugh. Very well. I'll grant your request for further testimony. I know it'll be painful for you, but can you enlighten us once more, my little maple leaf? Yes, I'll try, Mr. Judge. Putting on the old charm one more time, Dahlia, but this will be the last time you hide behind your womanly wiles. Five years ago, I was kidnapped by Mr. Falls. The ransom price was a raw diamond. My sister, Valerie, brought it to the bridge. After she made the exchange, she shot Mr. Falls in the arm. That's when Mr. Falls tried to kill me by shoving me off the bridge from behind. I survived, but I was afraid I might be kidnapped again for my family's money. So I decided to change my identity and start a new life. Hmm. The kidnapping left her emotionally scarred. With her sister's help, she left the Hawthorne family and started all over again. And we're to believe after all that she murdered her sister? Preposterous! Thank you, Mr. Edgeworth. Miss Fay? Yes, Your Honor. As you've heard, the witness is still traumatized from the kidnapping. 
I'll ask you again to be extremely gentle in your cross-examination. Mr. Edgeworth got the jump on me again. Ha! If we're not allowed to fight, then let's twist some arms. Listen up. We still got that info. That ace up our sleeve. What info? Come on, kitten. Don't say you've forgotten already. The fact that the kidnapping five years ago was staged. That's right, it was a fake kidnapping. Terry Falls told us that in the lobby. I do anything she says. Anything Dahlia says. What you're saying is that the kidnapping five years ago was planned by, yeah, Mia Dahlia and Valerie too. Yes, that's it. The fake kidnapping is your best shot, Mia. That's her secret. But we don't have that as, like, evidence. So what are we supposed to actually present? Five years ago, I was kidnapped by Mr. Bosch. I mean, that's part's technically kind of true. Like, what do we have? Used as ransom. That doesn't say anything about it being fake. Hmm. Let's just press everything. Did you and Mr. Falls have a relationship? Y yes as a tutor. You were tutoring him? Mr. Falls? No, of course not. Don't be ridiculous. Mr. Falls came to the house to tutor me. That makes sense. Five years ago she was only 14. He probably came up with a kidnapping plan during that time. What? Ha tutor in what? He's an idiot. The Hawthorns are in the jewelry trade and are quite wealthy you see. Hmm, quite the clever fellow, that Mr. Falls. Did I hear him right? Did he just call Mr. Falls a clever fellow? Ransom prize is a raw diamond. My sister Valerie brought it to the bridge. I heard the diamond is valued in the neighborhood of two million dollars. Two million dollars? It was still uncut, so it was about the size of a pint of milk. Hmm. A two million dollar pint of milk. I don't know what to think about that. The defendant demanded that her sister, Valerie, make the exchange. Not as a detective, of course, but as an individual. By the way, I want to ask you, Mr. Edgeworth, why do you think he wanted to make the exchange up there on that mountain? If he ever got surrounded, it would be hard to escape. There's one thing a kidnapper wants to prevent, and that's police involvement. In a place like that, it would be easy to tell if he was being followed. With only one entrance to the mountain, he was ensuring his safety. What a wickedly clever man that Mr. Falls is. Yeah, right. It was all your plan. Anyway, Valerie brought the diamond to the mountain and... After she made the exchange, she shot Mr. Falls in the arm. That was a dangerous thing to do, considering you were being held hostage. Yes, but actually that saved my life. What do you mean? You see, Mr. Falls was holding a knife in his right hand. Somehow, I just knew he was going to use it. I knew he was going to use that knife to kill me. That's why my sister shot him. It was to save me. That's when Mr. Falls tried to kill me by shoving out the bridge from behind. Why? Okay. I'd like to hear more about what happened right at that moment. Well, when Mr. Falls was shot in the right arm, he let go of me. I was dazed. I turned to try and run away, but Mr. Falls turned to grab me as well. This, this is like the biggest cliche of all investigative, like, detective stuff, is that is the idea that anybody would specify which arm people are doing shit with. Nobody says, like, he had a knife in his right arm. Everybody would be like, dude, he had a knife. He was gonna kill me. That's it. That's all, that's all anybody would say. As I ran past, he and I locked eyes for a second, and he gave me a large, bloodthirsty grin. Bloodthirsty grin? Oh. And in the next instant... I advise the court to remember that the river is 18 feet deep and incredibly swift. I, I was a strong swimmer, but I was knocked out. When I came to, I had been carried away by the river to a strange place. I'll never forget that day. The crumbling bridge, nowhere to run, then just one little shove from behind. That was it. 
Before my sister could catch me, I fell into the river. And that's why you hid your identity? Yes. I only told my sister. Valerie Hawthorne, eh? Yes, she's the only one who knew about me. Meanwhile, legally, this witness has been deceased for five years. I... I didn't ever want something like that to happen to me again. So I decided to change my identity and start her life. And that new identity was Melissa Foster, right? Yes, my sister helped me get the official paperwork taken care of. That makes sense. Without an insider's help, doing all of the paperwork would have been impossible. She was the only person left in the world I could count on. And you... you think I... killed her? There's no way I could! Hmm... It's the moment of truth for this witness, too. Once the truth about this staged kidnapping comes out, everyone in the court will know how much of a Jezebel she really is. I've just got to prove that kidnapping was a hoax. Yeah, but I don't know how you prove that. Like, none of the court record stuff. Dusky Bridge map, that doesn't matter. Scarf doesn't matter. Witness photo. Bridge unchanged for five years, it says. Uh, victim's note. This has been the evidence for like eight times now, so like it's not gonna be it again. Or will it? <sighs> Crime photo. Camera and diamond. Terry Falls, Valerie Hawthorne. Foster, Dolly Hawthorne. Kidnap of Mr. Falls. The ransom price was a raw diamond. My sister Valerie brought it to the bridge. But she didn't because the diamond was in your backpack. What? Huh, come on. After she made the exchange, she shot Mr. Falls in the arm. So where is the diamond now, kid? Uh... I mean, that's true, she did shoot him in the arm. Shot him in the right arm. <laughs> That's when Mr. Falls tried to kill me by shoving me out the bridge from behind. Well, that's... This is false. But... How? Aren't there railings? How do you shove someone off a bridge when there's, like, railings and shit? Yeah, you can't... You can't. You straight up can't. Look at this photo. What?! What? Aha! You say that Mr. Falls pushed you into the Eagle River. However, that's hard to believe. B but it's true. I felt a push on my back. I'm certain of it. It was Mr. Falls. I'm sorry. I guess I wasn't clear enough. I shouldn't have said, that's hard to believe. I should have said, that's impossible. I impossible? I ask that the court recall the condition of Dusky Bridge, now and five years ago. That bridge hasn't changed one bit in these last five years. If someone had pushed you from behind, as you have claimed, instead of being carried away by the river, you would have been smashed by the bedrock below, a most certain death. Do you understand now, Dahlia Hawthorne? The very notion that my client pushed you from behind is impossible. Ah! Uh. Your Honor, this event occurred five years ago. Why, for all we know, the water level in the river may have been higher back then. 
but it's 40 feet from the bridge to the river. A small change in the water level wouldn't have made a difference. Ugh. You're right. If the events occurred just as the witness has testified, then the defendant couldn't have pushed the witness into the river. Young lady, what is the meaning of this? Uh, I, I, uh, you see, I... Just a moment, Your Honor. It's true that the witness testified that the defendant pushed her into the river. However, she never stated that she fell from the back end of the bridge. What? What do you mean? After being shot in the arm, it's plausible that Mr. Falls panicked. Therefore, he could have unwittingly pushed her off the side of the bridge. If that's true, she would have fallen into the river. Well, Miss Hawthorne, is Mr. Edgeworth's explanation correct? Now that you mention it, I do remember now. When I fell off the bridge, my skirt got caught on one of the bridge's side wires. You can't be serious. Order! Order in the court! It seems Miss Faye's assault has finally reached its conclusion. Not now, Mia. This is no time to retreat. And I can't afford to be wrong anymore. Unfortunately for you, this is just the start of Miss Faye's assault. What? I believe your reasoning went something like this, Mr. Edgeworth. After being shot in the arm, it's plausible that Mr. Falls panicked. Therefore, he could have unwittingly pushed her off the side of the bridge. However, once again, I'm forced to say that's impossible. Ridiculous. What's so impossible about it? Because your flawed logic contradicts the court record. It's gotta be the photo. Your Honor, all of the answers are right here in this photo. Take a look at the wires supporting both sides of the bridge. They extend up to about five feet off the ground. I would be impossible to push someone off from there. No! B but let's remember the size and strength of the defendant. Wires like this wouldn't be a problem for him. He could have easily picked up a 14-year-old girl and thrown her over. So young and already so forgetful, Mr. Edgeworth. Mr. Falls had been shot in the right arm. Ah, and more importantly, Valerie Hawthorne had her gun trained on him at point-blank range. Ugh. So, Mr. Falls throwing the witness off the bridge? That's clearly impossible. Gua! Gua, 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 gua. Order, order! What is the meaning of this? Dahlia Hawthorne, you jumped into the Eagle River intentionally. What? What is this? Indeed, what do you mean by such a ridiculous remark? Yes, it's ridiculous. My sister was there to help me. She had her gun and handcuffs. She could have saved me. Jumping into a raging river like that, that would have been suicide. Perhaps. But still, that's exactly what you did. You were probably confident that you could handle the swift current. But even more so, the witness had a much more compelling reason for jumping into the river. Oh, then what was it? What was so important that she'd want to jump into the river? The witness is still alive. This fact alone explains everything. This is why she risked her life by jumping into the rapids of Eagle River. Has to be the diamond. If it's not the diamond, I'm literally at lost. Five years ago, something else disappeared along with Dahlia that day. The item that Valerie brought up the mountain with her. The two million dollar diamond. Ah, uh, uh, no, it can't be. Yes, Dahlia had it all planned from the beginning. The two million dollars, she was going to keep it all for herself. She forced Mr. Falls to help her fake the kidnapping. At the last minute, she betrayed him and threw herself into the river, with the ransom tucked away safely in her backpack. Why, that's... that's simply ridiculous! Order! 
Order, 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 order. Your Honor, five years ago the witness was only 14 years old. Do you really think a 14-year-old is capable of such a demonic plan? This woman is a demon. And there was one more person who helped make a demon out of her. Her sister, Valerie Hawthorne. You mean the victim was involved in the kidnapping fault plot as well? But she was a detective then. You're saying she participated in her sister's kidnapping? Precisely. I'm sure that it weighed heavily on her conscience for the past five years. This is the sole reason behind the victim's murder. What do you mean by that? On the day of the murder, after receiving the phone call from Mr. Falls, Valerie called her sister, Dahlia, and then she told her what she was planning to do. Planning to do? She was going to tell the whole truth. As she wrote in her note, that is what sealed Valerie Hawthorne's fate. That is when you hatched your demonic plan to kill two birds with one stone. A plan that would ensure neither of your accomplices to the kidnapping would talk. And that is why you killed your sister, Valerie Hawthorne. Or you killed your sister, Valerie Hawthorne. I'm not trying to call her Valerie Hawthorne. Hehe. <laughs> Who is that? Laughing at a time like this. Forgive me, it's just hilarious. Witness? Is that you? You amuse me, woman. Miss Mia Fey. You can certainly weave an exciting tale. Naturally, you have the evidence to back it up, don't you? E evidence? Evidence that I planned the kidnapping, of course. That at 14, I plotted it with Mr. Falls and my sister. Well, I... And one more thing. What happened to the two million dollar diamond? If you can't provide evidence to at least show that. Hmm, well, Miss Faye? What did happen to the diamond? I, I don't know. What a joke. You, Miss Faye. Are you stupid or something? Ugh. How can I prove a fake kidnapping that happened five years ago? I don't even have decisive proof of Valerie Hawthorne's murder. Well, it seems that we've come to the end. To be honest, the witness's behavior does raise certain suspicions. However, I am forced to reject the assertions made by the defense. Of course you are. Is this it? Is it really over? And that's going to do it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, you can like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.